Hi, I'm Dr. Dan, and I'd like to uh, spend a few of these uh, YouTube videos talking about some different stories and you know the things that I've run into over the years that I think is valuable and you know things people should know. And of course, I just don't want these stories to die, so this way they'll be uh, they'll be here as long as YouTube's around. Anyway, first story: when I first got out of um, Santa Clara University with a biology degree. I went to work for a place called Institute for Medical Research in San Jose, and we had the, the uh, good fortune of having different people come through and, and explain their research, you know, in our lunchtime seminars. Now, one, uh, one memorable uh, couple of guys that came through was uh, Archie Calicarinos, who is a primary care physician, and Glenn Detman, who's a pathologist, and they were practicing in Australia, and they ran across a very interesting situation. The, the sudden infant death rate in the population that they were dealing with, mostly Aboriginal kids, was about 50% by the time they were age two. And the kids could die at any point. And some of these kids would actually die in, in, um, in the clinic, you know, in the, um, in the doctor's office. And Dr. Calicarinos had this happen one time. Well, he saw it several times. He saw these kids die right and right in his office. And he didn't, you know, there was, he just couldn't stop it. So, you know, one, one day this uh, sick kid was there and he knew the kid was going to die and he said he still didn't know why he did it, but he hooked up an IV and put some vitamin C in it for this, uh, for this little guy. And the, the kid recovered within minutes and became very, very normal and went on to, uh, to grow up as a, a normal, normal person. Now, the interesting thing is that all it took was a little bit of vitamin C. So. Uh, Dr. Detman, the pathologist, had been working for uh, for many years trying to figure out what was the cause of this. So he got kind of excited, and so they began to do their own public health study. And by that, I mean that they just add some vitamin C to the formula because these kids were basically encouraged to uh, just be on formula and not be breastfed. You know, it's just the way uh, industrialized society was going at that point. So they. Um, they began to add vitamin C to the formulas just to see what would happen, and sure enough, the uh, by the time when they got this this formula to all these kids, the sudden infant death rate went, went to zero. So they got excited and they thought maybe the world would be interested in this, so they wrote a book, and you know, in part of their promoting the book, you know, they went to uh, places like like the uh, place I was working to explain it. Now, other another place they went to discuss this was uh, Stanford. And they talked to, you know, some of the lab directors there, you know, and explained their research in vitamin C. And they were getting a relatively chilly reception because this was not the type of thinking that uh, these um, medical people were used to. And so they kind of stopped their presentation and they asked the medical director there, you know, the labs, they said, well, do you vaccinate your lab animals, you know, whether it's pigs or, or guinea pigs or rats or mice, and they said, well, yeah, we do. I said, well, do you have a certain percentage of those that die or get, get uh, pretty sick after the vaccine? And, of course, they said, well, yeah, but that's expected. We, you know, that's just part of the deal. You know, it's like a half of a percent or something that will die. And I said, well, if that's the case, why don't you try this? Why don't you try giving them some vitamin C before and after the vaccines and see if it makes a difference? And, uh, and, you know, we'll be back next year and you can tell us what happened. And so, um, so the lab director said, well, yeah, we'll do it, but I, I have no idea. That doesn't make any sense at all. He said, well, just do it. Just humor me, you know, and see what happens. And so a year later, they come back. And so they asked the lab director again. They, you know, did their presentation. And they said, well, did you give these lab animals uh, their vitamin C before and after their vaccines? And the medical director said, well, yeah, we did. He said, well, did you notice any difference? You know, did, um, was, was there a change in mortality? And he said, well, yeah, none of the lab animals died when we gave vitamin C, but it can't be the vitamin C. It doesn't make any sense. And so anyway, the point is, there are two points to this. Number one, um, there's, a, there's a kind of a knee-jerk reaction in medical doctors, you know, classically medical trained, 
that if if you if the mech, if the mechanism doesn't make any sense to them at that point based on their, their knowledge at that time, then the notion is rejected outright. And I think that there's a real fear in medicine about being out of the pack. In other words, um, embracing an idea that's not accepted by everybody because medicine depends a lot on that social uh, contact and, it, and you don't want to be an outcast. So there's a real tendency to not warm up to these ideas that nobody else has embraced yet. So that's just something that you must be aware of when you, when you talk to your own doctor about different things that, that uh, you know, there's a certain fear about, you know, about not being accepted. And now they won't look at it that way. They'll say, well, there's no evidence for that or whatever. You know, they'll have their own rationalization, but it's really that. Now the second thing, that if you're a parent and you're wondering about vaccines, um, I'll just give you a very, very quick overview here. I'm not anti-vaccine, some people are, um, but I'm anti-stupid vaccine. So I don't believe that you should give, you know, uh, you know, 100 vaccines to a kid before they're age 5. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, most of these vaccines are for things that they're probably never going to be exposed to. You know, I like diphtheria, for example. You know, I've never known anybody who personally who's ever had diphtheria, been exposed to diphtheria, or I've known any anybody who's even known anybody. So, in other words, why would you make that a top priority? Um, another one is German measles. You know, I don't understand why you give a, a young boy German measles vaccine when it's such a mild disease, and the only danger is that there would be German measles, you know, that a, a, a pregnant person would be, would contract German measles because that will almost certainly cause a birth defect. So anyway, there's a reason for these vaccines, but they should be applied appropriately. Now the other thing is if you're going to go ahead and do some vaccines, now we didn't give any to, we gave one to our, our daughter, she got one, um, one uh, MMR, and my son didn't get any until he went to uh, the military. And when he went there, uh, within about six or eight weeks after that, he was starting to have some severe mental problems from, and you know, that he'd never had before. So, it um, took him a long time to recover from that. And so I'm sure it was the vaccines. But anyway, if you're gonna give your kids vaccines, make sure that you give them a lot of vitamin C before, you know, maybe three days before to kind of get their, get that, um, vitamin C levels up, and then maybe for five days afterwards too. And by a lot of vitamin C, I mean for a, a young, an infant, maybe uh, 200, 300 uh, milligrams a day would be enough, maybe uh, you know, divide that in two doses. And for maybe a five-year-old, I'm thinking maybe uh, 500 to 1,000. The worst case that's going to happen is they'll get diarrhea if you give them too much. And so I'd rather give them a little bit too much than uh, not enough. And so do that about three days before or five days after, and then you'll find the same results that those people had at the lab in Stanford, that uh, the negative reactions to vaccines, which of course every lab director knows about, but it's totally denied in the human population, but that you will, uh, you will very greatly minimize the damage that these things might be doing, and then you might get some of the, the benefit. Again, I'm not anti-vaccine, I'm just anti-stupid vaccine. So anyway, that's an interesting story, and um, so now it's on YouTube, and it uh, will be here forever, and so that, you know, people one by one can pick it up and, and understand the principles behind this and maybe, uh, maybe save a brain or two. So thanks a lot for listening. I'm Dr. Dan.